Mark's bad thing by Judith Kier. One day, Mark was coming home to her garden. She had been on a mouse hunt all night, and she was very tired. Mark thought, "I need a big sleep." But first, she went round her garden to see if it was just as she left it. The grass was still there, and the flowers were still there. The tree was still there, and so was her lavatory behind the tree. Mark thought, "That's all right then." It was starting to rain, so she went into the house. Mister Buns from the pet shop was there with Mister Thomas. He said, "Hello, Mark. All ready for the cat show tomorrow?" Debbie said, "There's going to be a cat show in the garden." Mark, can you be in it? What if it rains? Said Nikki. All the cats will get wet. No, said Mister Buns, because I'm going to put up a big tent, and the cat show will be inside. Debbie said, "Perhaps Mark will win a prize." Mister Thomas looked at Mark, and Mark looked back at him. He said, "Well, well, you never know." Mark had breakfast and went to have a big sleep. It was very big sleep, and it was so big that she only woke up after everyone else has gone to bed. Mark thought, "Now for another mouse hunt." But when she looked out, she had a terrible shock. Her garden had disappeared. the gu- The grass has disappeared. The flowers has disappeared, and the trees had disappeared. And worse of all. Worst of all, so had her lavatory behind the tree. Instead, there in the dark was a big white flappy floppy thing. The flappy floppy moved in the wind, and it went flap flap flap, and it went flap 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 with a loud flappy noise. Mark thought, "I better run." Then she thought, "But I want my lavatory." Suddenly, the flappy floppy thing. Flapped right at her. It nearly caught her nose. <gasps> Mark ran. She ran back into her house and she ran through all the rooms in case the flappy floppy thing was coming after her. She thought, "What shall I do? What shall I do?" And then Mark did a bad thing. She did not mean to do it, but she did it. She did it in Mister Tom Thomas' chair. <gasps> What did she do? She hid under the sofa when the flappy floppy thing couldn't get her, and she was too upset to think any more. So she went back to sleep. She woke up in the morning to great noise. It was shouting noise, and Mister Thomas was doing the shouting. He shouted, "Look what the horrible cat's done to my chair!" Where is that horrible cat? Just wait till I find her. Mark did not want Mister Thomas to find her. When no one was looking, she ran out from under the sofa and ran out of the room, and to the very top of the house. She thought no one will ever find me here. I'll stay here forever and ever, and I'll never go downstairs again. She was very, very sad. But downstairs, they were all too busy to think about Mark. Mister Buns had come to get ready for the cat show, and he fixed a hole in the tent where rain was coming through. Then he put out a table for the cat to sit on, and the chairs for the cat people. Debbie said, "It's time, Mark, get ready too. Where is she?" No one had ever seen her. No one had seen her. They all shouted, "Mark, where are you, Mark?" Mister Tom said, "Oh dear, here comes the first cat for the show." Debbie said, "We can't start the cat show without Mark." Don't worry," said Mister Buns. 
I expect she will suddenly appear and surprise us all. There was no time to go on looking for Mog because more cats were arriving. There was the Siamese from around the corner and the Blackies from the high street, the Ginger from the paper shop, and the and old Mr. Ben, Tommy, and Fluffy, who had once bit Mog's ear, and Oscar, who ate three tins of cat food every day, and a whole lot of others. Wow. <laughs> this is the one that eats a lot. They were all. They all went into the big tent, and the cats looked at each other, and the cats people looked at each other, and at each other's cat. There was a prize for most unusual cat in the show, and everyone wondered which cat would win. A lot of people thought Fluffy was unusual. He's only unusual as an ear. Biter said, "Nikki, Mr. Buns were round making notes, and he could not make notes about Mog because she was not there. Wherever can she be?" said Debbie. Mog was getting bored with her hiding place. She thought she'd look out the window, and the flappy, floppy thing had stopped flapping. It did not look so bad in daylight. There was her tree. It was there. It was still there. Mog thought I could jump, jump down on the flappy, floppy thing into my garden. Then she thought, but it might flap at me. Then she thought, shall I? Inside the tent, Mister Buns had finished making notes, and he said, "It's time to choose the winner for the show." We can choose Bertie, who's unusual eye, or Oscar, who's unusually big, or Fluffy, who's unusually furry, or Min, who's unusually well, unfurry, or Miss Pussy, who has a very unusual number of kittens. But something was wrong. Fluffy was getting wet. <gasps> oh, it was raining on Fluffy. It was raining inside the tent. Oh dear," said Mister Bunce. "It's another hole in the roof. The rain will come through." Uh oh. But then something more than rain came through. It was something furry, and it was something stripy. Nikki shouted, "Who is it? Is Mog?" <gasps> well, I never. Said Mister Buns, and in a little dress, I thought Mog must surprise, might surprise us, but this beats everything. Mog tried to say something, but only a very small noise came out. Meow. Then Mister Bun said, "In this show, we have seen some unusual cats, but none as unusual as Mog. She has." Flown through the air like a circus cat, and she's an abo abro cat. I mean, acrobat. She has an amaze. She's amazed all of us, and I think the prize for most unusual cat should go to Mog. Everyone clapped and cheered. Well, almost everyone. Mog got a very special prize, and Mister and Missus Thomas got a certificate. They were very proud. Mister Thomas was so proud that he was no longer cross about the chair. And when everyone has gone home, Mister Buns took his tent away, and Mog's garden reappeared. It was all there, just as before. And the grass was there. The flower were there. The flowers were there. The tree was there, and so was her lavatory behind the tree. She was very happy.